Welcome to Monday News number 45, the October Halloween edition from a very scary... No, it's not scary. So this month we released our Beyond Plastic video series, which is basically three videos. The first one is all about understanding bioplastics, biodegradable plastics, what does it all mean? The second one, we're going to show you how to make a bowl that you can actually eat. And the third video, Janis is going to show you how to build the machine to make the bowl. So it goes already quite in depth. But I would either way recommend to watch the first video to just understand the basic principles of bioplastic, biodegradable plastics, and also just to have a glimpse at the future of plastic. But before we're gonna talk about the future, let's go back to the past a little bit, one year ago. Um, because that's when we developed Precious Plastic version four. And meanwhile doing this, we realized, well, we also learned a lot about how to structure teams. How do you bring people together? How do they sleep? How do they eat? It's almost like setting up our own little community. So it's been a great research for Project Camp. So we also released a video about this uh, this month where you can see back how we did it one year ago. It's kind of messy, but we learned a lot. So in a bit more backwards into the past, in 1974, Enzo Mari shared his blueprints on how to build his furniture that he designed online so people could just build it themselves. Which is kind of seen as one of the first gestures of open source where you just share your information so this guy is seen around the world as one of the early starters of open source, respect. But he passed away this month, he became 88 years old. And another old man from 93, David Attenborough, released a documentary this month, Alive on Our Planet, which is uh, the same man that made all these beautiful Planet Earth documentaries. And he's been doing that his whole life, capturing wildlife and exploring the animal kingdom and putting that on video so other people can see that. Um, but he's also seen a lot of changes throughout his life. Uh, going the wild, slowly getting extinct, species are dying and humans taking over. So this documentary is kind of about that, showing the things that changed in his lifetime. And it really ends with that, like realizing how much influence mankind has on this planet and how much we've changed and how much we are still changing and the complexity behind it. And stuff like this really makes you think like, wow, that's a lot of big problems in the world. Like you need a lot of force to fix those, you must need like a massive army to do that. Talking about an army, we've actually been working on that for a while now, and we're gonna release it on the 4th of December. I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but it basically tries to do that, to bring all these people and all these solutions together to actually try to make the change in the world we wanna see, to really come together as one army. So make sure to visit onearmy.earth. Uh, not much there now, 4th of December it will be, but subscribe to our mailing list to stay updated because that's also gonna be our main source of communication, no social media. Oh yeah, and for this, we've actually also been looking into our Patreon supporters and how to include this in here. And we've been kind of lazy with Patreon, I would say. We share our updates, but we don't really give anything back besides all our drawings that are open source anyway. Um, but we were looking into what could we give our supporters, like do you guys want a bag, t-shirt, necklace, sunglasses, no stuff, uh, maybe a live stream. I would say let us know in the comments below, could be this injection molded t-shirt from this Lego guy. I don't know, I just wanted to show this picture, thought it was kind of cool. They actually also built our injection machine from Lego, but yeah. Talking about Lego, here's some Duplo. It's a stop motion video made by Johanna Plastic, where he shows how he makes his lamp from recycled bottle caps. Um, and he sells the lamps on the bazaar. You can also buy the machine on the bazaar. It's always good to see machines being built. And this month we also saw Precious Plastic in Iceland building a Shredder Pro, one of the early builds. Make sure to share feedback if you have. And these guys actually work very structured. It's super nice what they do. Actually Bjorn, this guy, helped out in version three with Precious Plastic. I'll make sure to not put attention on your hair, Bjorn, sorry. But they have this nice inventory of molds uh, and products they make. And they also made this product, which is Kind of boring, but I really like it. Um, it's for the supermarket where you split the products on this conveyor belt. Uh, this boring thing, always made from new plastic, could easily be recycled plastic. And I always get really excited by boring products like this. So yeah, nice. I always end up talking a lot about plastic. So let's talk about ceramics. A few years ago, I made my own mugs uh, with Lieke. And I would make the mugs and she would make the drawings on it. So people could order them custom. And we made about a hundred I made a video about how these things are being made. But at some point, uh, well, I got interested in plastic, so we stopped doing that. But now I found one on a second-hand website where you could buy one for 20 euro. So if you want a collector's item, link is below. Yeah, let's just go back to plastic. So this month, the team went to Italy to do a workshop with children. Here's a little clip of Mattia live showing what's going on. So this month, we also... 
So this month we also came to Milan to do a little exhibition and workshop and together with Adrian, Caro and Jan we come over here, we did a little exhibition, we doing workshop with kids and we're having a lot of fun to show people how to recycle plastic and how to transform plastic waste into much more valuable material. And finally there's one very important message from the Precious Plastic team because they have to move again. Hi, uh, Kat here and this is Joseph from the Precious Plastic team and as you might probably know we are developing open source machines, techniques and digital tools to enable everyone to start recycling plastic. So over the years we've been growing, growing quite a lot to over 400 workspaces worldwide using these machines and methodologies and with the team here we are managing those digital tools, um, we are doing international projects and we are also further developing and improving the machines and processes we share. So how did we even get to this point? Um, Joseph will give a very quick recap. So it all started with Dave. Welcome to a new Precious Plastic video. His workspace in a small town in the Netherlands where him and just a handful of volunteers developed the first couple of versions of Precious Plastic. But as the project grew and developed, this caught the attention of the city of Eindhoven and they ended up donating an old warehouse in the city center for us to develop Precious Plastic version 4. And that's when over 100 people came from around the world to help out. And at the end of that year, they decided to invite us to stay because they really liked what we brought for the community. Uh, but after just a few short months this year, they discovered some toxic paint uh, in the building and we had to leave the premises. Luckily, one of our colleagues, Jan, he uh, had a workspace in France that he invited us to come continue our work. However, we are quickly outgrowing this space uh, and we really need to find a lo more long-term solution for the Precious Plastic headquarters over the next few years. Ideally, a space where we can run the sheet press and boil water at the same time. Mayor, my girl. Yeah. <laughs> so, would you also be able to tell a little bit more about the requirements for what we need? Sure. So primarily we need a workspace to continue our research and development work as well as kind of be the base camp for our international projects. And this work sh workspace should be around 500 to 1000 square meters. It should have three phase power so we can run the machines, some natural light, uh, an, uh, an office space. And we have a full list of requirements you can find below. The location should ideally have good transportation connections. So connected to the rail network in Europe. Uh, close to an international airport to get to our international projects around the world. We are primarily looking at the Netherlands because that's where we're based legally right now uh, in Portugal so we could stay connected to Project Camp. But honestly we are pretty open for other spaces around Europe uh, so we're open to other alternatives as well. Yeah, so um, in case you don't already know here are some benefits of having precious plastic around. First of all, we will provide a functional space where people can bring their plastic waste and see firsthand how it's being transformed into a new product. And with this plastic, we do our research and development, but also the international projects. So that should then also generate some economic activity. And we also do like to uh, make workshops and workshops and events with the people from the local community to demonstrate, educate and inspire about better solutions for plastic waste. And our team is a very passionate team of uh, creative people who really like sharing their culture and their vision to work towards a better future. And everywhere we go, we really um, try to build up good relationships with the local surrounding, like buying as local as possible and really supporting and engaging with the local initiatives and uh, people. So here's where you come in. If you know of an organization or a space that would be willing to host us, please share the briefing document that you can find below with them and encourage them to get in touch with us. Thanks so much for your help and support. Thank you.